and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guest is a footballer. She plays for Man City. She plays for England. She's a lioness. I have a lioness on the podcast and I am so absolutely thrilled. She's also a mother of one adorable child. Hello, Demi Stokes. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> How are you feeling? Good. I mean, I got the set up sorted out, um, so that's probably going to be my most stressful thing today, believe it or not. <laughs> you know what? I think the technical side of uh, recording remotely isn't something that we even touch on, but it can, uh, I like to get our guests really nice and relaxed before we start like talking about you know personal things. I think it really, really helps. <laughs> Just get in the deep end, it works. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How's sleeping? How's all of that? How's that? How has the first year been? Do you know what? The first year has just been a whirlwind. When people keep asking us, I'm like, it's just been crazy. Um, balancing football, yeah. being a mum, being a good partner, you know, being a good sister, like family member. Um, yeah, it's just it's just crazy. Um, and you know what? Sleep's not been too bad. He's That's a good, good. sleeper. Um, we we figured that out quite late on, but we were like, just feed him, give him a bottle, fill him up, and he'll sleep. Um, and it seems to have worked. Um, but yeah, but sleeping isn't isn't too bad, you know. And Katie's been a trooper, you know, with me training, and I've got games and things coming up. Um, if if we had to get up, then Katie would get up. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we try and we try and like help each other out as much as we can and try and get a good balance. Um but yeah, this this year I keep saying with, even with football has just been, you know, nothing that I've experienced before. Um yeah. but I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the journey. Yeah, amazing. Uh, where did you grow up? What was your childhood like? So I grew I was actually born in Birmingham. I was there till I was three. And we actually had to move because of domestic violence. Um, and we moved to South Shields. Um, and my nan, my nan come with my mom. And I've, so I've got three brothers, one sister. Um, so she come up with all five of us. Five so, yeah, I was, kids I was, as a single yeah. parent. Oh, my gosh. And some yeah, of you, so, you're really close in age, some of you as well, aren't you? Yeah, Are you so the middle had, of that? My mum had three under three. And now I say to her, you're crazy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there was five of us, Nan and Mam brought us up, um, and, and they did such a great job, did the best they could, um, and we've all, we've all blossomed into, you know, really nice, mature adults, and, and then doing well in our own little uh, niche that we have. Yeah, what was it like growing up as a, like, a family with five kids? Just crazy all the time. Like I, I remember when we were younger, me and Whitney, my older sister, we used to wind Reese up, um, all the time. But Reese had patience, and he used to look at my mum as if to say, "Right, can I kick off now?" So my mum would give him the nod. Um, so yeah, me and my sister apparently used to always wind Reese up. Um, and then the younger two, I loved having two younger brothers because like, I used to like taking them to get the hair cut. I used to like dressing them. Um, so now I've got Harlan. The boys are funny because they're like, I bet you're loving doing his hair, dressing him. And I say, yeah, I, I do. That's like one thing I always make sure he has is good hair when he goes to nursery. Yeah, I love the fact that you've also brought up the chaos. Cause my, so I've got three boys <laughs> and it is chaos is the word that I use to describe it. And they met their uh, cousin a little while ago, a little baby niece, uh, my niece. And um, And they literally went to bed that night crying over the fact that we weren't going to have any more babies and I said to them but it's Aww. it's chaos like having three kids already there's a lot going on and they were like but we love the chaos bring on more chaos and I was like Aww. it's very easy for you guys to <laughs> say you, yeah, yeah. Well, if you can promise you'll be good for the rest of your life maybe we can have another one <laughs> if you can get through the next hour without fighting yeah. oh well, we can't oh there we go <laughs> having three boys as well I bet you that's like crazy because Obviously, we've got Harlem, but we tend to find our friends who have girls, they're very different as well. Yeah. Um, they're like, yeah, boys are just, you know, I keep saying Harlem's like a bull in a china shop. Yeah. Um, you know, someone at nursery, she said, oh, we did like a nice sensory and there was lights in a tent. 
um, and Harlan wouldn't go in it. I said, all right. I said, so Harlan, you won't go in a tent with nice lights and sensory, but what you do want to do when you're at home is sit on your car, stand on it, and you want me to push you with no hands. Like, <laughs> they're just, yeah, so it is just funny how, how they are and, and girls and, yeah, they're, it's, it, they're very different. They are, <laughs> and it's hard, isn't it? Because I think, I think I try so hard not to gender stereotype or kind of go, this is what boys do, this is what girls do. But having three boys, I think you 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 do having you you notice the difference when your mates are there and it's all really really calm because they've got girls who colour. I've got to say my third boy actually, a boy actually, <laughs> he loves to sit and colour. He's like oh, yeah? he's the calmest. Yeah, he's the he's calmest. Be he the artist. Just, yeah, I mean he's just <laughs> discovered anger, so that's also a fun fun thing to play around with. He's four. Um, but he's the he's the first one that's really honed in on the you know. That what it's like to just sit and craft because I didn't oh, have that cute. with the other two when you were younger did you look ahead to the future and think of like your own future with a family and you as a mum mum so my mum always said I loved I always loved kids she said Demi that's all you ever like when there was babies even how you were we and were brothers and um, she said that was just always something you wanted to do yeah. is, is be a mum um, and you know what? I love looking after people I love caring for people um so I always think what a better way is you know to mold your own little human like I'm not saying exactly how you want it because that's not how it works um but like it's not. you know in, <laughs> <laughs> but no but install like good values to yeah. you know this little human and yeah and, and I I love how I just love watching like Harlan develop and grow and you think wow like like I like, I'm really surprised now at how like clever babies are yeah. Like I, like obviously I had little brothers, but I don't because I was so young. You don't think about these things, but they're so smart. They they're really very, are. very smart, um, and they outsmart us a lot of the time, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's just such a nice, a nice feeling. I think. Yeah. So it's always been something that you thought you would love. Oh yeah, de- definitely. And when you and met... as well, I, 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 sorry, and I always say, like we have nieces as well, and we have friends, and I always say, bring them over, come for tea, do this, and pe- people are like, you are mad, and I'm like, I know, but the more, the better. So how did you and Katie meet? She's gonna kill me, but she gets really embarrassed actually. But it was over Instagram. Um, she messaged me, and uh, you know, our relationship just blossomed from there. But. I always wind her up because they always say, you pied me at first. You know, I got the old, you know, I want to focus on studies and stuff. Um, but I think she was surprised at my response because I was like, that's fair enough. I said, good luck with your studying. Um, you know, maybe I'll see you around. Um, and I said, if you need help with uni, since I've been through it, give me a shot. I don't mind. Um, so, yeah, it just it just developed from there. Um do you remember talking uh, uh, about uh, like family, like uh, starting a family or whether you both wanted one? Yeah. So I think we'd only been together maybe like, like it's, it sounds really cheesy, but when you know, you do know. And yeah. I think we'd been together just over a year and we were talking about kids and it seemed really like authentic and natural. It wasn't, it wasn't like something I was scared of, or, yeah. you know, or, or shied away from. And equally, because obviously we're in a same-sex couple, I think that conversation does have to be had yeah. early because you've got a plan, you've got to go to the clinic, you've got to... So it's not even just, you know, about, oh, yeah, let's have kids and, and then that's it. There's there's a whole lot of planning to it. Um, so I think it was important we had that conversation because yeah. um, I do think, obviously, then that would have been the make or break of, all right, no, I don't want kids. All right, okay, then that's not going to work. Um and then, yeah, we we basically had the conversation and then we said, right, well, do we go NHS route? But we knew the, the waiting list for that is, look for a donor is two, three years. Um, so we just said, you know what, let's let's do it ourselves. And we, we got planning. Um, so I think well, we've been so together. there's so much to think about within that as well, like who's going to carry, who's, who's yeah. egg, like, you know, what sperm are you looking for? Like there's there's so much to to think about within that and plan yeah yeah and I think obviously naturally because of my career and playing football Katie said look I'll I'll carry um but then I was like are you sure you don't want to put your career on hold because 
at the time she was doing a degree in psychology um and she said no that's that's something i want to do that's um and she she had this thing where she was like by 30 i want to be doing this and this and i said stop putting you know pressure on yourself uh almost because there's enough pressure it is when you trying to have a baby um so i think we'd been together two years at that point um and we started planning so we started um, we joined groups um once we decided Kate would carry, then it was like, okay, we want the baby to replicate how I look. So then it was like, what do we go for a Jamaican donor? Do we go for a white donor? So there was a lot to think about. Um, and actually it was a, it was such a tough, a tough time because I thought I was going to go to the clinic. We were going to get Katie checked and there was going to be a long list of donors waiting for us to pick. And actually, there wasn't any. Really? So, yeah. So we were like, right, okay, what what do we do now? So, um, you know, you can look online. There's a lot of um, like American sites. So we also went on there. And it sounds really awful when you speak about it, but it's almost like you're like trainer shopping or something because you're like, oh, right, well, we can have that color eyes and this hair texture. And you actually, again, you think about it too much because then um, you get a little picture as well online. And you go through them in case going, well, no, I don't like the way his ears are or his eyes. And is that or... the donor as a baby, that that picture? Yeah, so you can see baby pictures. And then if you subscribe again, again, money, more money, yeah. um, you could get an adult picture. Um, whereas I just was like, look, if you go off my features and then we put that in, then, um, you know, we'll be fine. But to be honest, I was like, if I had a pink baby, a green baby, put on my doorstep, <laughs> I'm taking it in and it doesn't actually matter. Like, I I wasn't too bothered of how how the baby was going to look, you know. Yeah. And I said, if we used a white donor, I'd be totally fine with that because it's just someone we're going to love regardless. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that process was just such a whirlwind. And then because I'm Jamaican, we wanted something quite specific and there just wasn't very many. Um did you have any friends like in same sex couples that had been through it before you? Because I can imagine that there's not a lot of information out there. And then all of a sudden, once you start, look, like maybe it's only when you start looking for it that the information's there. And then can it be overwhelming the amount of things and not knowing what is the right path or, you know, what, what, yeah. what how do you know where to go? It is overwhelming because I, I said, and I do have like friends who are in same sex couples who, have you know had babies but because of the ethnicity because we wanted something so specific then I couldn't I couldn't really relate to people yeah. or I, I didn't really know where where to look um but then like at one point I was like Katie like I'd be happy if we used a white donor like I really wouldn't you know be bothered by that um but then I I kept telling myself we're very fortunate that we can afford to do this and that's how I kept Katie grounded as well because at one point when it you know it wasn't working she'd be like oh let's just get a puppy and I'd be like you just want a puppy because this is tough um yeah. but I remember saying Katie look I've, I found this story and there was a woman who didn't even have any eggs she didn't she didn't ovulate she had no donor and then she was running out of money and I was like Katie this is awful so to bring us back down to earth and to I guess manage it it was we are very fortunate and we're very lucky so that's how I guess we we almost kept kept going with it Um luckily Covid hit um, and the NHS I think passed their their donors to private so actually it was it was just random that we you know I, I got a phone call I think I just got back from the Olympics we were in Wales on um, a, a caravan holiday and we got a phone call saying someone's come in and um, very similar features to Demi, same skin tone, hair texture. Do you want him? And we just said, yeah. Um, but it almost made our choice easy because we didn't have a picture. We didn't yeah. get to see anything. And it was almost just like a baby is, is it's going to be our baby and we're going to love it. So, you know, it, it didn't matter. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, it is a tough journey and I, I think there needs to be more more information and I think more help as well because I, I always say if 
financially what if you can't yeah and I just think that's so sad for families to miss out because of financial reasons one thing you've been great about actually with your teammates Man City teammates is you've said to them ask me questions ask whatever you want to know because it feels very much like you want them to know like what you've been through and also to help you know so help know what journey you're on and 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 you know how that might help them in the future yeah absolutely and I think and we me and Katie spoke about this I said you do know when we go through this process we're going to get loads of questions and um as well because Harlan is going to be a certain ethnicity um like even before Harlan was even born he had so much pressure it was like <laughs> is his hair going to be cur- curly how dark is he going to be how light is he going to be is you know, it, we had all these questions and I mean, I laugh about it, but it's just because people are so intrigued, but I don't think they know how to, you know, say it in the right way. Um, yeah. So I did say, and I remember when Harlan was born, we would be out and people were like, oh, he's got a good tan. Just just little things like that. And I would laugh about it and Kate would be like, well, does that bother you? And I'd just say, well, no, depending on how I'm feeling on the day, sometimes I'm like, okay, that's, that's rude or... Um, but again, I had this conversation with Kay because I said, and she was like, Demi, I, I didn't realise that's how you have to think sometimes. And I was like, well, yeah, you're going to have to now because yeah. you're going to get them questions. And because you're white and Harlan is of a darker tone, people are going to look at you funny and say, oh, are you his auntie? And she was like, really? And I was like, honestly, Katie, like that, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And that's the things that you will face and we will face. As, yeah. as a family so after you found your sperm donor what what happened after that what was the process um so it was after after that process it was katie oh actually no katie had already done that so katie basically i had to take um like hormonal injections to create the eggs um and she she was rough for like two weeks um she said it was like having a hangover for two weeks. It she didn't feel great, um, and that's why we went to the caravan just to try and get away from everything. Yeah. You know, settle every settle everything down, um, and like no like outside noise or or pressure basically. Uh, yeah. So I remember she ha- she then had to take the hormone injections to create the eggs. Um, she then obviously got the eggs taken out, and then you have to wait to see basically which eggs fertilize well and what what can be used um so yeah it was quite a quick turnaround to be honest from getting Katie's eggs taken out um to then going back in um yeah and I, I think was it October I think it was October or just before um we went to the clinic and got the eggs put back in and I rem- <laughs> I remember when when it got when the egg got put back in, the waiting just seemed so long. What was it like though, uh, seeing that dish with that egg, knowing that that could be, you know? So that... it, when I look back now, like everyone says, oh, it, it took ages, um, and I said I don't think it did because if you think of the process we had to do, you you've got to get your egg taken out, you've got to you know produce them, then you've got yeah. to go go in and it gets put back in, and I said. I think the turnaround once we got a donor was quite quick. Right. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing it on the screen and I always say, it just looks like a little raisin. And I remember the doctor saying, oh, the egg's in here and it was the tiniest, thinnest tube. Um, and I was thinking, I was like, where? Because I can't see anything. <laughs> um, but now I, because I, I took a picture when I was there and I've still got the picture of uh, the egg on the screen. But when I look at that and then I see Harlan, I just think, like it's so incredible and crazy that yeah that was Harlem. Can you remember about like, leaving the hospital, like leaving the clinic from that point and waiting to see what happened? Must have been agonising for you both. Or were you able to just leave it and and park it until you knew you could test? So I remember we we went to the clinic. Kate got the egg put back in, and um, and we went to the Trafford Centre. Um, but it was it was just to keep busy. Um. And it's funny, Katie got some McDonald's fries and she's adamant. She says it's the fries. The fries help. I said, all right, if you think that, then that's fine. Um, but I knew there was a test date and there's an app. So obviously Katie had the app 
um, and she obviously had the date of when she was allowed to test. And she always wanted it to, to be a surprise for me. So I didn't actually know when the date was coming up, um, nothing of the sort. And I remember I had a game and I went out with some of the girls after for some food. Um, but on the Friday and the Saturday, she was she was hyper, like climbing the walls, like <sighs> unbelievable. So I thought it must be coming up. But I was planning on going home on that Tuesday and I thought I've got to be careful here. Because I'm thinking, if I say I'm going home and it's a test date, she's not going to be happy. So I said, oh, I'm thinking about going um, up to my mum's and my sister's on, on Tuesday. I said, do you fancy coming? She was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I thought, right, perfect. So then I was like, it can only be Sunday or Monday, like <laughs> that it was happening. So on the Sunday, I went out and then I got a text on Sunday while I was out and she was in a mood. She was like, it's not work. I'm not pregnant. Like, just this big spiel now. And I was like, look, just calm down, yeah. like, just wait, be patient. Um, well, Monday, it was Monday, the test date. And I thought we were being burgled. So the bedroom door flung open. So usually I'm a light sleeper, so Katie moves or gets up, I usually wake up. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I was in this deep sleep. <laughs> but, yeah, I thought we were being burgled. So the door flung open, and she was like, Demi! Demi, go and look, go and look. And I was just like, okay, what's going on? So I walked into the bathroom half asleep. And she was like, look. Um, and then I remember just standing there and I, we just looked at each other and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I just, I just, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, it was, what once, once I seen it, I was like, wow, this, it, it's really happening because also um, you would have been living in hope that that would be what was what was about to to you know be the result but at the same time so many things can happen there are so many variables like looking at that tiny embryo in that little you know you just like how can that possibly be it yeah and that's how that's how I was like everything that like throughout the pro like pregnancy and the process it was almost like I I almost applied it how I do as being an athlete because there was times where Kate was like, are you even bothered? Like, are you even excited? And it was, I had to explain it to her. I would be like, look, Katie, because pregnancy is so long and then things can happen and, you know, like you can miscarry, like things like that. I was, I was petrified and I remember I was like, right, she's pregnant. So then it was like, right, we ticked that off. And then it was like, right, I need to get you to uh, 12 weeks. That, that, so then that was my next step. So it was like, Right, okay, we need to get you to twelve weeks. Um and and then we'll go we'll go from there. So it was almost like a it was like a step by step and it was like a thought process. So I had to explain it to Katie, like, I'm so excited because if I went to football and the girls would ask, I'd be like this, like I'd be telling the girls. But with Katie, I almost felt like I couldn't be too excited because I was like, if anything happens it's me that has to bring you back down to earth and also myself. So I almost try to like stay here, but sometimes You're almost like, protecting yourself from, from whatever. Might yeah. Happen. Yeah. So she would be like, are you excited? And I'd be like, Katie, like, I'm so excited. And I'm sorry if I'm not like expressing it very well, but it's almost like I'm, I'm trying to look after both of us and, you know, so yeah, the way when, once we were pregnant, it was like, right, get you to 12. And then once we got to 12, it was like, right, the next one is a 20-week scan. Okay, after that, you can start buying things. And so it was just, I think, being an athlete and playing football, that's how I um, I dealt with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. When did you start telling people? I mean, we told my family really early and then I told, like, one or two friends. I mean, if you knew that test was happening on the Monday and you were planning to go and see your family on the Tuesday, that is so difficult to kind of keep it. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was weird because my mum was like, is Katie coming? And I was like, oh, no, no, she's not. So then when I remember I went to my mum's house and my mum looked at us as if to be like, well, you said Katie's not coming. Mm -hmm. So then I, I had... Um, <laughs> It's quite weird, actually. It's quite funny at the time now, I think. But um, I give my mum the, the pee stick. Um, and I said, oh, mum, here you go. And she she said, I knew it. I knew it. She went, I knew when I seen Katie get out of the car, you were going to tell me something. <laughs> um, 
but my mum was my mum was so excited and then I met my sister and my little brother and we all went out for a curry and I gave my sister the stick and she went what are you giving me a curry <laughs> I said Whitney <laughs> look at it again <laughs> and she was like <gasps> um so I told like family like early which I know you're not supposed to but because it was such a process and because I was always telling them like all right yeah um Katie we're going to the clinic so I, I always had them in the loop um so that's something that's ingrained in us that we can't tell people until 12 weeks that it's not the right yeah. thing to do but ultimately it's like you said about you know not letting yourself almost get excited so that you could protect Katie you, you almost I, I feel like you need those people around you to know the people that you love because if the worst happens you need someone to be there for you as well yeah, yeah, it's like it's almost not. a dirty secret. Otherwise, you know, it's like miscarriage is a dirty secret. We just we yeah. just hide it. We won't tell anyone because if it happens, then we can just it's easier to not talk about and forget. Yeah, and and I think I think as women we do that, but with a lot of things, and I yeah. think I think we have to make ourselves more vulnerable and be more open. Um, because nine times out of ten, in a room full of women a lot of them have probably gone through, yeah. you know, what, what you have. So, yeah, I, th- I think it's so important to try and talk. And, I mean, I'm sitting here saying that, like, I'm the best person at talking. I'm terrible at it, you know. So, it, but I do think as women we can be better to, I think, help each other as well yeah. um, and lift each other up and say, actually, actually, yeah, I went through that. Or, you know, because I, I think it'll just spark so many more conversations and, we'll we'll learn a lot more about ourselves as as women and mm. how how to just deal with things and um it's like even I, I remember reading a story um again you don't think of these things but I remember seeing I can't remember the name of the celebrity but there was a celebrity who had a baby and she had um preeclampsia and I, I'd never heard of it um and I read the story and I remember sitting on the sofa and I, I don't get emotional but I felt really like, wow, I was like, that's awful. I was like, imagine going through that. Well, we went through that. But I just was, you know, little little things like that. I just think it's so important to, to share your story, which is why I'm quite open to to come on co- uh, podcasts to yeah. talk about things because you probably are helping a lot more people than you think. Yeah, and, and something like preeclampsia, I think it's on the lot, on the whole, I would say, it's something that you mostly only hear about when you are pregnant, you know, or when you're expecting that, you know. So it's something that if you knew more about it, like there's a lot in the same way of like starting to try for a baby in a same sex couple, you know, you had that knowledge almost has to be out there before you get to that point. Um, yeah, it's all, it, I feel like the information's almost too late when yeah. you get it or you hear about it or you're in the situation. And I think like, I think Katie's situation or like our situation would have been like so much better if we were given more like advice or here's the signs for preeclampsia or you know if this happens but it, yeah it it was all just too late and I was like yeah. but why why isn't there more information because I wouldn't have known anything about it if I didn't read read this story um and it we all, I think we're lucky that Kate, so Katie uh, used to work for the NHS. So she's very in tune with her body. She's yeah. very good at, you know, reading signs for things. Um, and she had really a high blood pressure. So she was like, I'm going to go and get checked. Um, and I was cooking tea. I said, do you want me to come? She said, no, no, you stay, you sort tea, I'll be back. Well, for weeks I kept saying, pack your baby bag, pack your bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, get the phone call, not allowed home. Blood pressure won't come down. Um, so I said, right, well, what we doing? What needs to happen? She was like, right, I need the baby bag and I need the bag. So went up there, took the bag. And the nurse said, where's your bag? I said, what do you mean? I said, we're not due for another few weeks. No, no, we need to get the baby out. So when I got there, I said, right, okay. So I said, I'm going to have to go back home. Katie hadn't eaten by this point. So I come back home, got a tea, packed my bag and went up there. And it just went from like zero to a hundred, like in um they couldn't get a blood pressure down and they said, you know, we're worried in case she has a seizure. So I was like, right, okay. Um Was she thirty four weeks mo- pregnant at this point? 
Is it 34 weeks she was here? Uh, yeah. And so I was like, oh. and then in the morning, next thing I knew, there was like 10 people in the room and it, it was saying, get the baby out. And then it was, Katie's the concern, not the baby. And I was like, what is going on? So Katie's now upset because they're obviously saying, you know, Katie's the concern and not the baby in this. And then I was thinking, so then it, it sounds awful. And I, I, when I say it, it makes, it makes me feel really sad when I say it. But in my head, I was sat there thinking, I was thinking, right, how do I weigh this up? I was like, well, I need Katie here because if anything happens to the baby, we can go again, we can try again. So I was like, I need Katie here. Um, and then in my head, it was like, it was almost like I was deciding between the that baby and Katie because I was hearing these, all these comments. Um, yeah, and I just, I just remember it just went from, you know, zero to a hundred and I was trying to listen to everyone and logically, because I was thinking I'm going to have to decide if Katie, you know, is, you know, too upset um, and whatnot. So after it all happened, she went, I'm not getting a C-section. I'm not, I'm not getting one. Don't want one. And I was just like, Unfortunately, Katie, you might not have listened to anything that they've said, but you are getting one and you need to and you have to. Um, because at this point, we didn't have time on our side um, because of the preeclampsia. Yeah. Um, so she's like, I'm not getting one. And then as well as mothers. Um, and again, I, I, I think I think different again because of being an athlete. But Katie was just adamant. She didn't want to see a session, uh, section. She didn't want this scar. And I said, hey, I said, what's wrong with the scar? I said, I've got one on my stomach. Um, so you'll have one and I'll have one. So that's fair. Yeah. So I try to, you know, like make it a bit of a joke. Um, so she ended up having to have a C-section. Um, and I, after the C-section, I was like, brilliant. Like, we're out the woods. Fine. And they were like, oh, yeah, Katie didn't bleed a lot. Um, now we just have to monitor her. Like, this is the, if anything's going to happen because of preeclampsia, it's now. So I was like what is you know what what is going on so then I Katie was in one room Holland had to be taken up to the NICU ward um so it was it was just crazy once he was here because she wanted to breastfeed as well um so then I was asking to get milk take it up in a syringe give it in the syringe come back down um so yeah from from the day he was born it was just it was just crazy and how long was it until everyone could come home? Um, I think it was a week, a week they were in there. Um, but it, Katie struggled in there because obviously she had the C-section, they say you're not allowed to lift, you're not allowed to move. And she said, you're making this a lot harder for me. She said, let me go home or you let my partner stay um, so she can help. Yeah. Um, but they, they they wouldn't allow it, so... For, for that week, she just was like, it's you're hearing noises of the hospital beds, yeah. the nurses are in and out. So she was like, I'm not sleeping. And then it was like, well, Harlan needs feeding, but you, you're saying I can't let him, like, I can't pick him up. Um, she was like, so you're actually making this more difficult when yeah. I do have a supportive partner at home who wants to help, who wants to be here. Um, and you're not, you're not allowing it. Mm. That's really tough. Um, actually, one thing, I am going to go back a little bit. Because let's talk about finding out the gender of your baby. <laughs> I mean, I just want to know how this happened. So obviously you shared a little video of you popping yeah. a little popper thing and it's all pink. That at what, at what point in the pregnancy was this and where did this information come from? So we were, I think, 16 weeks pregnant and we, we were impatient. <laughs> so we went and got an early scan. Um, so we said to the we said to the guys at the clinic we said look don't tell us the gender can you put it in like the the balloon because we want to you know we want to do a reveal or whatever um, but as well this reveal I was like I don't want everyone to be there like I was like I just want this moment to be me and you like yeah. we've waited so long and yeah so, I, so I'm quite glad that I I said that because I was like, imagine we did this big party and had everyone there and we, you know. But yeah, I remember, I think it was Chris, Christmas Eve. Um, I think we popped it. So we were like, amazing. Oh, so um, it created such a pink mess. The mess. Oh, I did not realise I had pink 
on the ceiling it was <laughs> on the fridge like weeks later I was like looking in the top of the cupboard and it was in the cupboard I was like it literally went everywhere um but I was like whatever for, for someone that has OCD at, at that time I was like oh don't worry about it um <laughs> but it did kill me um so yeah I was like oh amazing we're having a girl um you know my family got excited we were excited um we got the room done you know you know we got room painted everything dresses were bought yeah, you know there was there was dresses, there was pink things, there was we had we had a lot of like neutral colours as well, luckily. Um, so then why for for whatever oh yeah we had the twenty week scan. Um, I was at training. I said to Katie, um, "Do you want me to come?" She said, "No, no, we'll we'll be fine." So she went by herself. Well, I had a missed call. I had two missed calls. Well, my heart sank because I, Katie never rings more than once if it's. You, you know, unless it's an emergency. So I had missed calls and the signal was not very good at City either. So I was like, right, okay. So I rang her and she's sobbing. So I was like, what has gone? And I was like, Katie, what is the matter? And she was going, <gasps> and I said, what, what's wrong? I said, right. She said, guess. I said, what? And she, I said, we're having twins. Um, she was like, no. And I said, right, is the baby healthy? Is the baby all right? She said, yeah, yeah. I said, right, okay, what's going on? Do you remember having a boy? I went, all right, okay. I said, brilliant, like, amazing. And she was like, does anything ever bother you? And I was like, well, yeah, but the baby's healthy. Um, We're having a boy now. So she <laughs> just was like, you're so annoying. Like, so I remember I come it in home. such a laid back way. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So I just, so then I went out to train and I was like, oh my God. I was like, girl, you'll never guess what. Um, so I told them like, oh my God. They're like, no way. Like only that could happen to you. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, what does that mean? And they were like, well, you're, cause you're so laid back. Like it's all right. Like, <laughs> you know that's what we mean so I was like right okay um so I come home Kate was in the biggest mood she was still upset but then I was like I get it from her point of view because she's carrying um you know she's connected to the baby and we had names as well like girls names so I was like I get I get it from her point of view um so I said right get your coat on we're going out she went where are we going I said we're going to the Trafford Centre so we went to the Trafford Centre and we went to Zara and we bought some boy clothes. So once we'd bought boy clothes, then I think she was a bit like, all right, okay, um, like coming round to it. Um, but yeah, I just, again, I just was like, look, Katie, the baby's healthy. Like, you know, and, and like I say, I always try and relate to other people. Yeah. And so many like friends who have gone through like terrible things of losing babies and people miscarry so that again that's how I then brought us back to like yeah. our reality almost um but as well I if, if I'm honest I was so excited we were having a girl but then as well I had this and it sounds awful but I had this daunting feeling and I was like we're having a girl and I'm gonna have to prepare her for this world I said oh, I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to create a warrior Katie and she was like what are you on about and I was like you know, girls are vul- like vulnerable, but again, I said I shouldn't be saying girls are more vulnerable because, y- y- you know, kids are kids and any yeah. any kids are vulnerable. But in my head, I was almost like, yeah, we've got we've got a tough challenge in our hands. Like, do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. I was saying, you you have to have like really serious conversations. She was like, wow, you've really thought about this. And I was like, no, like girls are vulnerable. Like, you, they go out and you've got to have these conversations. You know, when you're going out about how you know things things can happen and stuff like that so she was like do you not want a girl and I was like no it's not that I didn't want a girl but again because I thought we were having a girl that was my that was my thought process like yeah right I'm gonna have to prepare like a warrior girl here and you know give her the wits about the world and and whatnot and she's like well do you not think that about Harlan and I said no I still do but I think like I think boys are just like not that the less vulnerable, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I don't, yeah. I know what I'm trying to say, but that was my thought process. Of, I was so excited we were having a girl, and then I did have a little daunting feeling. Where I was like, "Wow, I need to prepare, get a warrior yeah. prepared here." Almost, I can understand Katie's um, 
reaction in some way. Simple, no, I can uh, I can understand it in lots of ways, but one way in particular is the nesting thing that takes over. Yeah, and feeling like you're almost prepared in whatever way you've made steps to be prepared. And I know I know gender doesn't change what you've already prepared, but it does because you're does. In, in in your mind you know where you're going, and then all of a sudden there's a shift that's out of your control. Yeah. Oh yeah, def- definitely. I totally get it from. I totally got it from like Katie's um, point of view, and I always try and do that. I think I always think, all right, well, in this moment, why is she feeling like that? And equally, Katie's not been an athlete, so yeah. when things do change, a lot of people don't like change. Um, you know, as athletes, we're used to things, times of changing, or your games cancel, or you know, think yeah. your schedules changes all the time. So again, I think that helps helps me as well um but I always try and think well actually if I if I was pregnant if I'm heavily pregnant what would I want and what will what would I need from from Mm -hmm. Katie at that point during um the birth so afterwards once everyone was okay although you obviously worried about Katie and preeclampsia at that point can you remember having Harlan and having a moment with him you know of that realization of this is a new chapter. Yeah, so because she because she had the C section, obviously Katie was on the table. I had to go and cut the cord. Um, and I remember the lady, the nurse said, if he if he cries, that that's good news because his lungs are fully formed because he was premature. Um, if he doesn't, we're going to have to rush him off. So that was the next thing I was like, yeah. you know. So that was another. And I remember someone went, "Oh, he's out." And there was it was just silent. So me and Kate looked at each other and I thought, you know, kind of thing. And then yeah. another nurse was like, he's not out yet, like, d- don't worry. And I remember I heard the crying. Um, it was, it was that was the, a relief. So I was like, right, you know, that, that was another thing. Um, but I actually got to have a moment with Harlan as soon as he was born because I got, I got to cut the cord. Yeah. Um, but I remember I just I just was staring at him because I just was like, how like on the screen what looked a little raisin like he's he's finally here and I remember I just I just stared at him um, and then I took him over to to Katie um, but yeah it was yeah it was it's just the best thing like when people say oh wait till you have kids it's the best thing and you think oh yeah yeah but it it really is and it. There's no feeling, there's no way to describe it until you're in that moment. Mm. What was it like when you finally got to leave hospital? I, I remember I was so excited. So I'd been training. I knew we were allowed to come home. So then I went up to the hospital, but they were like, oh, you can go out at whatever time. And I was thinking, well, we're not, because you've got to sit and wait and the yeah. process is long. Um but I remember I, before I went to the hospital, I come home and I blitzed the house. I already had like the crib in the corner. I had um, all the little like baskets for the nappies, the wipes. Like I just had everything ready because I was so excited. So I remember we left the hospital. I think it was quite late. I think it might have been about eight o'clock at night. And I had set the car seat up. Um, so I set, I set that up. Um, we got we got him in, and then I remember we just come in the house and he was wrapped up in his like hat and his his um, blanket, and we just placed him on the sofa. And then I was like, "Well, what do we do now with this little human? <laughs> We've just been sent home with like no guidance really, because even when we were in hospital, depending on what ward you're on, some people were like feed him every three hours. You need to do this. Don't bath him till this. Don't do that." And then we just got home and then I was like, all right, well, where's all the noise? Where's everyone's opinions now? Like, what do we do? Um, so then it was, all right, we need to figure, we need to figure out this little human now. I love that. Um, and, and, and that was even like, obviously we, I've got younger brothers and stuff, but I can't remember like what, it, what I did or what you do or, um, and then when it's your own, it's, it's very different as well. Yeah. Um, So I think even like feeding times, we were like trying to figure that out. Um, And sometimes we would sit and wait till 12 o'clock to feed him because we were like, right, he's had that feed at that time where we were like, actually, why don't we just go to sleep and get up? So it was just like, it's like all that you try and like figure out as well. Um, It's a whole new way of existing. Oh, yeah. 
and you're just on survival mode like yeah you're just on survival mode <laughs> and you had two weeks at home and then you had to yeah. go off for six weeks for the euros yeah yeah like, how did you feel like leaving I know you knew it was coming but how did you feel leaving knowing that you were going to be away for that length of time so I remember when I found like when I was like oh I remember I kept saying to Katie, I needed Harlan to come early because I was like, the earlier he comes, selfishly, the better it was. Yeah. Um, because I, if he had to come on his actual due date, um, I would have been in like mid tournament, and in my head I was like, and would I would I have to leave? Like, do you know? So all that was coming in my mind. And when he come early and we were home, I was like. This is perfect almost because I was like, I get the two weeks. Um, but then I almost made it harder because then I just had to go. I just yeah. had to go. And then Katie was like, well, now I'm by myself and you've been a massive help. Um, you know, what do I do? And it's only, and I, I, and again, I panicked because then I was, I was like, she's on her own. I'm away. And I remember saying to her, I said, if you have any ounce of feeling that you think, you, you know, because postnatal depression is is massive. That was then my next thing I was worrying about. So I was like, if you, you know, if you have any doubts or you're feeling, you know, overwhelmed or anything, I was like, you ring me and I'm coming home. Like, there's no questions asked. Um, and it's only now where she's truthful with me. And she was like, I did find it hard, but she yeah. was like, I wanted you to be there, but then I'm like, but I wanted to be there for you. So it was almost... Well, in that um, two weeks at home as well, you'd have seen like the rawness, the messiness, you know, all of that stuff that comes with it. That I, I think so often when yeah. we go and see newborns, it's a case of oh, it's a lovely, cuddly time, and then we leave, and actually we don't see the mess that's that's behind all of that. Yeah, because that's what I said even as well. I said if you're not ready for visitors, like you need to just say. But because it's just such a nice time in your life, you want your loved ones there. You want. Yeah. You want them to be there and, and see. Um, and Kate, Kate is only like truthful like now where she said, I probably should have asked for help more. Um, but I knew that because that's why I think I was stressing a little bit like, Kate, you like, are you all right? Or, and I think, again, I don't even know if it's a thing, but Harlan had colic where he did the screaming from like six at night to like, for like two, three hours. And Kate was like, it's relentless. She was like, it's like someone's screaming right in your face yeah um so then it, like she obviously she had that and then I'd be like have you ate no I've not ate all day and I'd be like okay you, you need to eat because how if you're not 100% how can you give yourself you know fully to Harlan um and that's a bit dramatic because you do get through it but all those things are still important like I kept saying to her yes you're a mum now but you're still Katie so yeah you know, treat yourself as Katie as well as a mum. Um, and I, I think a lot of women struggle to do that. Mm. Um, but it, it's only now where she's like, actually, I, I did struggle. And if I do go through it again and I do need help, she was like, I will ask for more help. Because it was pe loads of people saying, um, let me know if you need this or, you know, we can take Harlan or if you just want to go and get a bath. Like there, there was lots of people saying, you know, I'll come and help you but I think when you're a first time mum you just think this is normal and yeah. this is how it is yeah it's funny isn't it like if you like that because I say all those things to a lot of people I know that I've had a lot of people say those things to me I would never take them up you know what I mean it's just that thing of whereas I know that when you're offering I mean it sincerely you know and I know the people offering to help me would have meant it sincerely but it yeah, feels like I, such I, a I, leap I, to kind of go, yeah, please just come and hold my baby so I can shower or do something. That's yeah, funny. I think, yeah, I think you, and again, like I was saying, it'll be really interesting when I carry and will I, will I feel the same or will it be di so different because Katie's gone through it and she's like, no, Demi, like you are going to take a bath and I'm taking the baby yeah. or let so-and-so take the baby. So I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'll be the same. Will I be different because I've, and Katie go for it yeah. I don't know but I just think until you're in that baby bubble like it, it's hard yeah <laughs> is that the plan for you to carry next time yeah I, I would love to um to carry next I, but I, 
I won't be as excited as Katie, I don't think. Like, I've never known anyone to love being pregnant so much. Like, Katie loved it. Like, every time I'd be night, she was on Assos and she was like, oh, look at this dress. Like, won't it look good in the bump? And um, I'm going to get new bras. Like, she just loved it and embraced it and it looked good on her. Um, but I said, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be like that. I what really do you don't. think you will be like? I mean, I'm definitely just probably going to be in like big baggy joggers and like t-shirts. I ain't wearing these nice cute dresses to show my bump <laughs> off. Um, and then I keep saying, and I'm still going to work out. And she'd be like, Let, let's see if you work out because the tiredness of being pregnant hits you. And I'm like, mm. no, nope, I'm still going to be going to the gym still gonna be doing this also as Natalie you're so in tune with your body so having it go through something completely different to what it's used to going through might be just completely fascinating to you as well yeah I, yeah I think I definitely will but but even when Katie was pregnant I was like just watching like a baby like grow inside Katie and then Harlan's kicking and then you seen like the ripples on her um like stomach when they move and when they roll I was like this is incredible. And then the, like they were saying, because Kate wanted to breastfeed, they were like, just before you, you give birth or, you know, you, you produce milk. And I was like, that's just incredible. Like, I was like, women are incredible. Like how, like what your body goes through and then how it just recovers and and how people do it five times and more yeah. is crazy to me. Um, I, yeah, because I, I always say, obviously I've had friends and cousins and aunties and uncles They've had kids and you think, oh, yeah, like the pregnant, like, yeah, congrats. But I think to see it firsthand, the journey, and I think even more so because of we went through IVF. Yeah. I just was like, I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, If you could write a letter on motherhood, who would it be to and what would you say? If I could write a letter, it would be, I'd probably write it to Harlan and I would just say that I'll always have patience with him. I'll always love them because that's just what kids want first and foremost. That's just what they want. And I'll always give them my time. He'll always have my time. I love that. We finished the podcast with you completing three sentences. The first one is being a mum means. Being a mum means. You're always tired, but you're the most happiest. Since having yeah. a child, I don't worry about things that don't matter anymore. And I'm happy when I'm with little bubbles and Katie. I love these cool bubbles. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, it's <laughs> it just randomly come about because Katie used to call them bubbles boo boo. And then I was like, actually, I quite like bubbles. So now I just call them bubbles. And then now everyone calls them bubbles. Like my mum was like, how's bubbles today? Whitney's like, how's bubbles? And like the girls are like, how's bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's just because um, I said he's like he's like a little barrel because that's what we used to call him, a little barrel because he just eats all the time and he's stocky. Yeah. Um, so that's where it come about. <laughs> I love that so much. Demi, thank you so much. I've loved this. Thank I love you. I love your mind. I, I absolutely love it. I love the the logic, the 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 way that it's pragmatic. I love the the fact that you soak up other people's stories and that you're able to help those sort of manage whatever you're going through. I, you're fascinating and I and I'm weirdly really excited about your future, your future family life, future <laughs> career life. I'm I'm yeah, I, I'm blown away by you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed sharing my story, so thank, thank you. you for giving me that platform. Thank you very much.